Welcome to Three Questions, episode 19. I'm here with Josh Marsengale. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did, I actually. Pronounced that was it great. Right. I pronounced it right. Uh, tell us who, who you are, what you do. Uh, my name is Josh. I work at Bethel Atlanta. Um, I do, I'm their operations support guy, so, but it's nice just kind of working behind the scenes um, there. And, um, you know, I went to the school for three years, loved every minute of it, got a lot out of it, um, helped me kind of um, frame uh, a lot of uh, my personal testimony and those kind of things in such a way. And um, honestly, I think it's probably one of the biggest reasons that I was able to write this book. Nice. So, nice. so we're talking about this book today, mm -hmm. Encounters, a book about encounters. Right. So for someone out there who sees this book, like Encounters, that sounds intriguing. Is that like right. Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Like, what is this? <laughs> so how would you describe Encounters? Like, what is an encounter? I love uh, the word itself, honestly, even just the spookiness of it, all that kind of stuff. The Lord grabbed me with this word to help me understand um, a lot of different little things that He touched me with, you know, like the relationship that He was forming within me. And uh, this word just kind of grabbed all of that at the same time. I don't think I've redefined it or anything like that. I would, wouldn't even try to do that. But the word encounters, even in the dic dictionary, says um, basically an unexpected moment where you run into someone or something like that. So uh, a lot of everything that I experienced with the Lord was really those moments that I didn't, I didn't initiate. You know? So just something spontaneous and unexpected. Yeah. So something right, like yeah, that. You, I mean, you know, kinda, I, you're you're living your day all of a sudden, like you run into God. It's like God set a trap for you, maybe. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, I I think He is kind of willing to set traps for us and stuff, just to kind of encourage us on in our relationship mm -hmm. with Him. He's so much bigger. Some He's got so so much goodness that we don't know of. We're, we don't start out understanding a lot of the places that He wants to take us, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, giving up our uh, even our desire to understand everything is actually really useful and in, in the approach to well, just being able to accept whatever he's got to give the desire to understand mm -hmm. it's it's crazy this this christian journey because like in my 20s i was like i wanted to know everything mm -hmm. and i think that's a big part of of, of the walk you know so there's there's people in their 20s doing way more amazing things than i am so i'm not knocking people in their 20s <laughs> um today but in my 20s i wanted to know as much as I could, mm -hmm. but then as I began to know, I was like, I, I needed to have some experience with it. Right, yeah. And knowing, and um, so that's where I think like people get kind of blurred in a theological approach to the Bible of, I know it, I know it, I know it, but how much of the Bible have you actually lived? Which is why I'm really right. excited about a book about encounters. When I hear about encounters, it makes yeah. me think of moments where like, you know, heaven invades earth, where all of right. a sudden you find yourself, you're interacting with heaven on earth, you're interacting mm -hmm. and engaging with the spiritual and prophetic realm. Exactly. So, question two. Uh, <laughs> tell us about an amazing encounter that you've experienced, or a spontaneous moment, or something that just kind of came upon you and you just really had this amazing God experience. Right, I mean, uh, so many encounters. I write about, um, uh, you know, uh, honestly, I had a dinner with God, one on one, I had <laughs> I had an experience awesome. with, um, with with Jesus where he just gave me an open vision in the park. I had um, an experience with the Holy Spirit where I drowned in just the the presence of heaven and wow. um, got you know drunk in the spirit and wonderful ex uh, experience uh, left have you, me. Have you read um, Ted Decker? The New Mystics? Oh, uh, yes. Mystic. I started reading it. Yes, okay. it's a really good book. Because when you yeah. said drowned in his presence, it reminded me of some of the okay. stories in this book. If you haven't gotten that far. I don't think I have, but well, yeah, maybe I, I whet your there. appetite to get a little <laughs> bit deeper. <laughs> got to get back to that one. What's one of your favorite encounters? Uh, my favorite encounter by far is, was the dinner with God. And um, the short version of that, um, a lot of pain in my growing up experience. My brother and dad both committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Lots of heartache and brokenness there. And um, I didn't even realize how much of that reflected on my image of who God was. And obviously that had caused a lot of setbacks in my life, just even thinking that he was someone that he wasn't. Um, so I think he prioritized, honestly, after I gave my life to him, uh, just healing my heart. Uh, not just giving me a new one, but helping me see how uh, that, that, you know, I was a part of that and that was me. It wasn't just something, you know, uh, outside of me or something that I was trying to get to. Mm. It, was, it was within me and it was something that I could get a hold of. Yeah. So, but um, the, 
he, so he worked at repairing that relationship, which I talk a lot about in the book, but the short version of that, I ended up um, in, you know, just on the road uh, after, uh, you know, a long day, and I think it was 11 p.m., and uh, I heard the audible voice of the Lord, right. and it just came from every direction. It was everywhere. And I mean, I, I, I had never really heard that before. There was a lot of reasons already that I felt like, man, I, maybe I'm losing my mind. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't help, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, but when I heard it, he just said something really simple. He said, um, I want to eat here. And I look over uh, diagonally across the road, there's a restaurant. And um, so I pull into that little restaurant. I go up to the counter and the guy tells me, I'm sorry, sir, we're closed. It's 11 p.m., you know? I was like, oh no, what am I doing? So I was like convinced I was crazy at that point. Well, whatever happened, but this guy walks away, comes back and he says, you know what? Never mind, actually, come on in. <laughs> and, um, and he's like, I'm going to turn the lights down and I, um, you know, I cleaned before you came in, so please don't make a mess in there. Uh -huh. And all this had significance, you know. Wow. Um, so, so I go up, I order food, and I sit down and um, I realize I'm in this pristinely clean environment. Um, their lights are low and there's uh -huh. these kind of ridiculous love songs on uh, from the 70s or something. And I was like, wow. It, you know, I mean, it just occurred to me, like, wow, God is romancing me. This is really wow. something, you know. And, um, and you know, as a man or whatever, all that kind of stuff came into play. I'm like, well, this is un not what I would have expected of him. But wow. um, all, in all that time, the most profound thing of this entire experience, the presence of God was thick. It was very tangible. This was an experience that was a very tangible one. And, um, I, you know, I mean, so much so that I expected him to show up. I was so, like, maybe my food will just combust into fire in front of me or something. You know, I mean, I was, to, yeah, I was yeah. ready for anything. Um, uh, but, but the really profound thing was that he just didn't ask anything of me. Like, he wow. was there to pour his love on me. I think uh, Leif Hetland, one of my favorite authors and writers, like, he talks about the baptism of love. That was clearly mm -hmm. what was happening in this situation. He was pouring out an unending amount of love on, on his son. And in, in that situation, I was waiting for an mm -hmm. if statement. If you could just do this, Josh, if you yeah. could just, you know, if, why don't wow. you be a missionary? Um, if you could, you know, change your life in this way or start doing this, None of that happened. Nothing. I mean, it was it was just, I love you. You know. So he didn't take you out else. to dinner and get something from you. <laughs> right. You know, and that's what I would. He took you out to dinner because he was in love with you. Exactly. Yeah. He actually wow. wanted to spend time with me and and share his emotional, like, uh, mm. you know, response to who I was with me, which mm. was it was awesome. Even as you're talking, I can feel the presence of God and. No. <laughs> Presence of God is a feast, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my friend Eric Gilmore says a lot. He says, they're just talking about when Jesus is doing communion mm -hmm. and he's like giving the bread and he's giving the wine. He's literally saying, take me, eat wow. me. Yeah. Jesus comes to dinner and becomes the dinner. So just take a moment right now, even as we're mm -hmm. in this video and just, this could be your moment. You weren't expecting it. You clicked Whoa. on this. <laughs> this video and then spontaneously surprise here God is right yeah we thank you for your presence Jesus mm. yeah. thank you for your encounter your experience thank you for heaven on earth even in this room right now for the glory that I feel God yeah. wow 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 yeah and <laughs> the cool thing is is that while you're talking about having dinner with God having dinner with Jesus yeah your experience becomes an encounter for me right <laughs> because i'm feasting on your encounter uh, this is the economy of heaven being released on earth to impact us all and that's, that's exactly what this book is trying to help it's, people see it, there's re just returns everywhere there is a supply that heaven is pouring out it is practical it's but it's also very spiritual mm. and you know all of those things are relevant it's not some of them I, you know we as, as people on the earth, you know, if we're in business or something like that, we walk into a room full of anxious people and we have the supply of peace from heaven, who's going to make the best decisions in that room? Wow. We are, you know? So that, I mean, it, everything about encounters are extremely practical, uh, but they're also very, very out mm -hmm. of this world. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of a story. <laughs> um, 
I mean, um, our dear, some of our spiritual parents were driving from um, Wisconsin down to Georgia. Yeah. And we stopped at this um, Hardee's just to use the restroom. Uh -huh. But we were driving through a rainstorm. We were all just getting absolutely smashed in the car. Wow. And so I ran into the Hardee's and I was like, hey, <laughs> the Holy Ghost just fell in the car. <laughs> yes. And they go, where are you from? I said, Georgia, I gotta pee. <laughs> so I just ran into the restroom and then I ran back out. Wow. When I got back in the car, I was like, what just happened? Wow. There's a response of, yeah. where are you from? Like, right. what's going on? Like, so when yeah. you live a lifestyle of encounters, when you've been dining in the secret place with Jesus and you spend your life in heavenly places, when you go into earthly places, those places become heavenly. Oh man, it's so true. It's a real reality and what God has done within us is exactly what we can share mm. with everyone else. So it's, it is a supply. It's just like having a wallet. You know, I mean, your testimony is your wallet. And, you know, That's and, the, and the encounters that God has has put into your wallet are something you can just start handing wow. out. You wow. can. I mean, this is a place where you can practice generosity. This is a place where you can, you know, just come and bring something to the table, even if you don't have money mm. or whatever. I mean, like this is something that uh, really will increase the, you know, uh, every Christian's experience. And it's actually in Revelations that this is what the end looks like. It's like whenever we all realize that Jesus has done something in us, and that's the, the valuable thing. The testimony is the most, what Jesus has done is the most valuable thing. <laughs> I really like that analogy. Your testimonies are your wallet. I mean, imagine like, you know, I, I have credit cards that give me points. I have a debit right. card and all this kind of stuff. So what situation do you run into that day? Do you need to pray for the sick? Well, I have testimony. Right. Do you yes. need to share an encounter? Do you need to have some kind of supernatural answer for your business, for your job? Do you need to release peace? And the more you steward it, it's kind of like each car, that, that limit goes up and then it expands and it increases. Exactly. And you have the wealth and the substance of heaven flowing through you. So encounters, go from like, can it go from like being spontaneous to something you can activate? Because I know you talk yeah. about stewarding the encounters in the book. Right. So how do you take something that's like, almost seems accidental to something you can purposely expect and then steward that in your life? Right, I think honestly, um, something as a culture, we can, as people, as individuals, we can just begin to celebrate our testimonies, like uh, testimonies are a big deal. As we craft our testimony, we're actually packaging something so mm -hmm. that we can hand it out. Um, so it's, it's the process of, become, of you know, building a, a kind of currency, you know. I'm, I'm, I, am, right? I am like pulling something that has happened into, to me that is probably kind of difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it through a, a filter of sorts to, so that I can hand it over to others. I'm just, I'm processing it, I'm helping make it digestible, I'm making a meal. Mm. Like Jesus would do, honestly, he would make a meal and he would yeah. serve to us. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make something that that is tasty. And it's not that I'm creating or coming up with stuff or out of nowhere. It's just that I'm like pulling together everything that I've got, and I'm saying, this is like, this is what you need to know. Like God is doing this on the earth today. He That's, healed me from this. He, yeah. He saved me from this. My mind doesn't think the same way. I, you know, a crooked place was made straight. It's, all those things are so mm. powerful and they're available. If they're available to me, then they're available to you. There's God's no respecter of person. That's a beautiful verse. It's super helpful if we understand it within the context of an ecosystem. Like, whoa, wow. I'm getting so fed. Like <laughs> Papa Leif says, it's everyone brings their own special sauce to the table. Then mm. the kingdom family gets to gather together and eat. Exactly, yeah. And the history yeah. that you carry gets added to my own history. And I'm enriched in doing this interview. Yeah. I'm enriched in reading about encounters. They're going to, they're going to come alongside my own encounters and enhance them. Mm -hmm. And I also find that sometimes when I hear about other people's encounters, I can go back and revisit mine. And your encounter has a piece that unlocks more of the treasure chest of that encounter that was missing. Right. It's like you go Absolutely. down, you're like, oh, wait a minute. You move some of the treasure of that first encounter out of the way, right. and there's another hidden chamber. Oh, that I wasn't so able to access it until I heard about you. I heard about dining. Oh, wait, there's something in this encounter I can dine and feast on. Wow. So guys, go out and get 
encounters? Where's it available? Uh, it's everywhere. It's uh, BiblesForAll.com is, is my wife and I's uh, organization. Uh, we're, uh, we're actually doing this thing where if you buy this book, then we'll give a Bible in India. That's where we have uh, mission groups uh, happening right now. So, um, so it's just a good cause, and all the proceeds go to this 501c3, and um, you can do that on BiblesForAll.com. You can also get the book anywhere online, uh, almost anywhere. Tell us more about your and Mary's ministry, what that oh, looks yeah. like. Um, um, so Bibles for All, we want, we just have a vision that everyone should have a Bible. I think it's a, a pretty reasonable one. Um, I, it's such a big statement, but um, God really encouraged us that you know He can do anything. So we believe in God that He can um, get Bibles in everyone's language, in their hands, in the way they need it, whether it's audible or physical. Or, uh, we're working with a bunch of different organizations to help uh, make that happen, and we've got some ideas. We inherited this organization about a year ago from uh, my father-in-law, and uh, they have been doing missions in India for for years, and um, and so they have a beautiful thing going there. And so we're just kind of continuing that, and then really focusing on how do we actually become a part of the solution of getting Bibles into everyone's hands, wash the world with the Word of God, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's one other thing I'd love to mention, if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, we started a podcast, Abundant mm -hmm. Encounters. Um, in Abundant Encounters, we, you know, faith comes by hearing, so we use the Word, and then at the end, we do a prophetic act. Every single one of these episodes, there's about 15 of them right now. And uh, every week we're releasing a new prophetic act. Those prophetic acts can lead you into a real encounter. So go and grab that, that podcast. It's Abundant Encounters. It's obviously free. It's a podcast. So you can find it almost anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And I'll put all the links below. Put the link to Encounters, the book on there. We'll put the link to the podcast and BiblesForAll.com. Thanks. Remember, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you scroll down below the video, you'll see all the links, all the content, stuff like that. Hey, man, thanks for coming on the show today. It's going to be thanks awesome. Man. And I uh, hope you sell some books. And when you get this book, don't just kind of read it. You know, do what Josh did. Take it somewhere where you can dine and feast yeah. with Jesus himself Absolutely. as you read this book. Mm -hmm.